Hello, this is Le Salvager. I'm turning a bit of rusty angle iron, some fresh tree trunks and a few old oak floorboards into a rustic dining table worthy of a French feast. I'm willing to the build, but there's still loads to do, so let's crack on. I've laid three boards out on the trestles, and already I can see they're more than adequate for a decent sized table. But I'm looking for a table that'll seat eight people. Now that needs to be two metres ten, or seven feet in length. But if I slide my tape up and down the boards, I'm going to be able to select the three best bits. I'm avoiding the right ends and trying to minimise any areas of old woodworm damage, because when I sand them down, the affected areas won't stand up well and the wood will just break up. These type of saws really make life easy, but do always be careful, they take no prisoners. This is too wormy to be much good for anything, but it's still good for the fire. Well, they're cut roughly at length, but they definitely ain't straight, and if I don't get that sorted out, I'll be losing half my dinner through the gaps. Some of the angle iron I found in a brewery I'm going to use to decorate the table, but this particular bit is going to make the perfect stray edge. Don't be fooled into thinking I'm cutting that much off the board. There's an inch and a half between the edge of the saw and the blade, and I need to make an allowance for that. It's nice and square now, and I can see I'm going to end up with a table that's just over 30 inches or 77 centimetres wide. But that's absolutely perfect because there's enough room for a row of plates either side and a pot of something lovely in the middle. Now I've squared all the edges to where we put together the tabletop, I'm going to do something which might seem a little odd. I'm going to take all these corners up with a planer and that'll make it look as though it's been knocking around a French farmhouse for donkey's years. I'm going to hold the boards down with coach screws. Now, to mark out the pile of holes, I'm just going to transfer the marks I'll put on this piece of angle iron. I'm experienced enough to line this sort of thing up by eye, but there's no shame in whipping out your measuring tape if you're not as confident in the workshop. With this flat drill bit, I'm just going to recess these heads below the surface. Twelve of these hours to drill in total. This drill bit is going to give me the pilot hole for the unthreaded part of the shank. And this final drill bit is smaller than the thread to make sure the screw gets a really good bite. Now there's any number of ways to attach a tabletop to a set of legs, but I've got me tried and trusted favourites. I love the semi-industrial look that coach bolts give a piece of furniture. Twelve coach screws is more than adequate to hold this top down.
This is all locked down, really good and solid, and it's a good opportunity for me to lose the ends of these cross pieces. It's one of the things you learn about through experience, when to tidy something up and when to leave well alone and get on with the build. This is starting to look well tidy. I'll just get these ends straightened off. Now you've all been wondering what I'm going to do with this angle iron. Well, I'm going to use it to cap both ends of the table. And I'm doing that for three reasons. The firstly is because it will level up the bolts. Secondly, because it will lock all the bolts together. And thirdly, because I like the look of it. I'm using these simple J clamps to apply targeted pressure on the planks and angle iron. The angle stays rock solid, but the wood is more malleable and bends to fit the shape of the iron. That's pulled up lovely. Once again, I'm going to attach these decorative features using coach screws and I'm drilling them straight through. This is pretty tough, this iron, so I'm having to work for me pocket money. <laughs> Normally, I'd use a pile hole before fixing a large screw, but because it's the end grain of decent timber, I'm confident it'll be OK. Not sure I'd say the same for new timber. This is tough but meticulous work as I move around the table. Eventually I'll have used 12 chunky coach screws and my top will be rock solid. The excess is trimmed back with my ever useful angle grinder. It's always a good idea to remove the birds from these edges, otherwise you'll be hunting for the first day box. I'm happy with how my design is coming together, but it's missing something, and I've been racking my brains to come up with a bit of inspiration. Now, I think I've got the answer. I spotted these up in the attic a couple of weeks back. I think they were intended to be firewood, but they'd be perfect for the two horizontal bowls I need for my table. I'm using these as cross bases for shelves with a nautical theme. Glad this is here, it makes a handy bench. For my purposes, I'd like this a bit smoother, so I'm just sanding off these nubs. shelf at about this sort of height, but to make sure my mates don't bang their knees when they come to dinner, I want to set it back as far as possible, and in order to do that, I'm just going to cut the back away a little bit. This is a real tricky shape to chop out, so I've made a series of saw cuts, and that'll help me break it out with my axe. Perfect. I love using coach screws. They're a good, easy fixing and they're good and strong. Well, that's both horizontals fixed and they are good and solid. But it ain't much of a shelf until I put something along here to fill this hole up. these pieces of offcut and ended up with four lovely bits of wood to form my shelf. Now I could have held these in place with yet more coach bolts but instead I want to introduce not only a new technique but a new material. I want to hold these down with nice natural rope. I've never been interested in the Boy Scouts but I do know a thing or two about knots and rope play and if you're an old cab or girl guide you might recognise this idea. Now I've drilled this hole so I can pass the rope through 
I'll tie a knot in this end. And that gives me a really good anchor point to start working. This will get a lot easier as the rope gets shorter. I'm carefully winding the thin cord around the groove shelf and then around the table length pole. This is proving a laborious job, but it's making a great design feature and it's a good solid fixing system. It's well worth experimenting with at home. This is quite exciting me. I've never actually done this before, so you're seeing history in the making. What I want to do now is give the top a bit of a clean up and we're really moving towards the final stages. I want the farmhouse finished, so I'm not sanding this surface, just taking off the worst with me planer. using a wire brush to get off the worst and the rust. This clean new service is going to have a hard life, so it needs to be sealed first. I don't like polyurethane varnish, and paint ain't right for this build, so I'm going for a reliable option. There's a few brands of wax on the market that are really easy to apply. You put them on, leave them a few minutes, and then buff them up to a really good shine. Forests in this part of France are deep and mysterious, and I really wanted to bring a little of their wild spirit into my home. Every piece of timber I've used in this build was destined to be part of someone's log fire, but it's my job as salvager to give everything a second chance. With the creation of a solid, beautiful centrepiece dining table, I feel that was a decision well worth making. The tabletop seats eight and is a rugged and beautiful surface. Beneath, these legs give the build an organic feel, as though the table has sprouted from the earth. Iron cappings are practical and provide eye-catching detail, but I'm most pleased with my simple shelves. The raw materials for this rustic beauty cost me just 15 quid. It's taken me a couple of days to fashion this one-off dinner table, and it'll be a worthy addition to any home, say so magnifique. And it looks even better piled over with food for a dinner party with friends. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I've invited a few mates round for a simple Vosian meal of grilled fish. The table is proving a big hit. Here in France, sharing food with your friends is the ultimate social pleasure. It's an even greater pleasure if you can do it on a table you built with your own hands. So why don't you join me next time and see what I can serve you up here on the salvager. Santé! Santé. Santé.